CataractCoach.com on axis incisions for Torah Guy Wells. Vector maths, why I like to make the incisions on axis, or heck, even off axis. Here's the complete cataract case start to finish, showing you here eyes full of viscoelastic. Look at the cornea. There are marks already made on the cornea, those three dots on either side, showing me the steep meridian. I'll use my diamond keratome here and make my main phaco incision right on that same axis, that on axis incision here. I'm using a very thin keratome, so I'll slightly enlarge that. Why are you making the incision there? Does it make a difference even? Well, remember, astigmatism is a vector. Vector math, right? That means it has magnitude, like one or two diopters, and direction, such as steep at 20 degrees. Maybe that's this case. So because it has both, you have to take both into account. So if you add or subtract vectors, you have to do it a specific way. You learned this back when you were 12 years old in math in school. And so because I'm making the incision on that same steep meridian or axis, my incision will cause some asymptomatic flattening, but it will not cause a change in the axis. That's what's so important here. I always think, think like an airplane. Imagine an airplane that's flying and there's a perfect tailwind or a perfect headwind. That'll slow down the plane if there's a perfect headwind. And that means the, the wind is the exact opposite direction of the plane. Or if there's a perfect tailwind, that means the, the wind is exactly behind the, the airplane and it's pushing exactly forwards. That changes the speed of the airplane, but not its direction. Now think of a crosswind. That means that the, the wind's coming forwards against the plane, but it's also coming at an angle, so that changes the airplane's speed and direction. And same with a cross tailwind. So these crosswinds are much more challenging to predict. And remember this, you may think you can predict your surgically induced astigmatism for every case, but you can't. Because every eye is not the same. Some eyes have a small cornea diameter of 10 and a half millimeters, some have 12 and a half millimeters. Some have a thicker cornea, some have a thinner cornea. Some of these eyes, there's corneal elasticity differences. An older cornea behaves differently than a younger cornea. You cannot exactly predict your SIA, surgically induced astigmatism. You can't. So in order to just have a more accurate result from surgery with a toric lens, always make your incision, if you can, on the steep axis because that's going to slightly decrease or, or help treat your astigmatism, and more importantly, will not change its direction. So your calculations ahead of time are going to be far more accurate. And if the other option is okay, you can also make your incision on the flatter axis, or 90 degrees away from the steep axis. Why? Because that also is going to change the amount of astigmatism. It'll slightly increase it, but again, it won't change the direction or the axis or the meridian of the astigmatism. And that's what's so important. Now, these are minor differences. I get it. If you're a junior or resident, you're a beginning surgeon, you're just getting started out there. Listen, we're talking about a small fraction of a diopter difference in a refractive outcome. It's not huge. But there'll be a point when you're like me, thousands of cases in, you're going to want to be a perfectionist. You're going to want to make this as accurate as possible for your patients and plus for yourself. My goal is to really deliver the absolute best outcome for my patients. And I care a lot about that. It's really important to me. So in a case like this, I want to take everything I can to get it as accurate as a result as possible. That means exacting pre-op measurements, looking at the topography, the tomography. I look at the posterior cornea as well as the anterior cornea. I use multiple different machines to measure the corneal astigmatism. And then when I plan this out, we take into account all these factors, and I really try to get that phaco incision, if I can, on the steep meridian. And in this case, even, this toric lens was predicted to leave the patient with a little bit of residual astigmatism, because, of course, these toric lenses only come in half diopter steps, or equivalent at the corneal plane, and so I was able to make a slightly larger incision. And if you noticed, I made this incision about 2.7 millimeters wide in order to help achieve that goal. Now, I'll seal up the incision here. And now you can look, the toric marks on the IOL are going to line up beautifully with the toric marks on the cornea. So I'll get those Purkinje images lined up. I can make a little bit adjustment here if I need to at the end here. 
Yes, you can use interoperative guidance and fancy systems that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we have all of them. Our service center in Beverly Hills has millions of dollars of equipment. That's not the point. Cataract Coach viewers are from around the world, and you want a simple way to achieve a beautiful and very accurate result? Well, I just showed it to you. So here's the end of the case. You can see that is just a beautiful outcome. This patient achieved exactly what we wanted and was absolutely thrilled. And I hope you take this into consideration and improve your future Torg Iowa cases as well. Thanks for watching. There's a whole Torg Iowa section on cataractcoach.com. You really ought to check it out if you have a keen interest in giving the best to your patients.